Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and today we have an amazing exciting tutorial today we're gonna to be looking at how to create water dripping down a window and the cool thing about this is that it's completely loopable so you can loop it back as many times as you need to so let's go ahead and jump right into Houdini alright here we are in Houdini and I'm not gonna be showing you every single node that I drop and the reason why is that you have my scene and you'll be able to go check everything right there so let's go ahead and look in this node right here called setup and everything in here is quite simple to start off with I just have a line and I've added uh, quite a few points onto it and the reason why is that we want to give it an attribute called mass and we want to randomize it and the reason being is that when we're in our dop net when we when we have the particles hold on let me turn on this really quick when we have our particles falling we want them to fall at different speeds and if the particles have a different value for the attribute mass then that's going to cause them to fall at different speeds and so there's nothing too complicated here it's just a pop force node uh, with uh, some force in the negative y direction and that's what's causing our particles to fall down back in the setup let's go look at this pop sim cache which is just the particles that I've cached out and I'm going to drop down a time blend node really quickly and then attach a trail sop to that And I'm going to turn up the trail length to like 50 just so we can see it better. And now we can see that we've got a bit of a trail, but the problem is, is that it's straight and we kind of want it to have a little bit of variation to it. And so we can do that pretty easily. I'm going to go ahead and delete these few nodes really quickly. And let's go down to where it says drop path noise. And I'm going to put the display flag on that and dive right in. So we want to add a bit of variation in the path as it's falling but we don't want it to change in the Z position because that would be uh, like this way and we don't want that we only want it to be in the X and Y and so the way we can do that is pretty easy I just have a turbulent noise right here and instead of uh, instead of plugging in this sum directly into the position what I'm doing is I'm using a vector to float and, and then a float to vector again and I'm only using the X and Y positions and then for the Z position, we're just grabbing it from the original position. And if you use a get vector component, it allows you to choose one axis. And in this instance, we want the Z axis, which, which would be component three. And so we can plug that into the Z position here. And as a result, we'll have the noise only affecting the X and Y positions. Let's go back to the setup again. Now it's time to make our cache loopable. And the first thing that we're gonna do is let's put the display flag on the droplet cache. And well, if you if you're just getting out the seed, you might want to go through and cache out all of these files. Uh, for me, I've already cached it out, so I don't have to worry about doing that. But anyway, I'm going to go to the camera and look through it, and I want to find the very first frame that the rain enters a frame, and then I also want to find the the last frame that it's in the camera view. And I've already done that out, so I'm going to go switch to this. Oops, I accidentally disabled that. I'm going to switch to this time blend. And we can see that frame 159 and 278. And so now if I go to frame 159, just to make sure, you can see that this is the very first frame that it enters the camera view. And then what was the other one? I already forgot. It was 278. And so now if we go to frame 278, we can see that that's the very last frame, or that's the frame where it exits the camera. And now I'm going to go uh, place a retime node. Well, I've already placed it, but um, I'm going to go to the retime node. And we're going to input those two values right here, so 159 and 278. And what we want to do is we want to take this cache and duplicate it and play it back on top of the other one. But if we just simply do that, so let me... Uh, make a merge node really quickly. So if we just play this over itself, you can see that obviously one cache is just playing on top of the other cache, so that's not particularly helpful right now. Uh, but we, what we want to do is we want to offset one of the caches by half the total length of the cache and then start playing it. I know that sounds complicated, but it's not super difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up the calculator really quickly. No, I don't need the calculator because I'm really good at math. I'm just doing this to prove that I know what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 278, which is the value that we have right here, and I'm going to subtract 159 from it. So 159, and that gives us 119. 
and that means that our cache is 119 frames long. And that's good information to know, and the reason why is because we need to offset our cache by half the distance of the total time of the cache. And so if we go to this time shift node, we can see that we've taken 119 and divided it by 2. And so now, when we merge the caches together, they're going to be played perfectly um, offset by half the distance, or not half the distance, but half the time. And so now, that means if we go to frame 1, and then we go to frame 61, it should look exactly the same. And we can see that that is the case here. So frame 1 and 61 are exactly the same. And so that means we can come down here to the um, timeline and we're going to, for the, the maximum frame that it plays, we're going to set it to 60 really quickly. And that means, because 61 equals 1, that means when instead of going to frame 61, we just want to reset all the way back to 1. And so now I'm going to uh, flipbook that really quickly. Alright, and so now if we play this, you'll see that as soon as it recycles, or as soon as it cycles back to frame 1, it looks like it's one continuous clip. All right, I'm going to close that really quick. All right, now we're going to create the static drops. Uh, I created this uh, null right here, and it has out dynamic drops. Let's keep that in mind. And we're going to go back up to the top, and I've created a grid. And this grid has quite a bit of resolution. And the reason why is that we need to store an attribute on it. And the attribute that we're going to store is called path. Now, we want to create a path on this grid that, that stores all of the surface that the drops cover as it falls along. The glass and so I'm going to merge in the drops and that's where we, we I said we need to keep that name in mind because we're going to use the out dynamic drops and merge it right here and then create our path attribute right here and it's going to go into the second input of this geometry solver and the first input is going to receive this grid and so now we're going to go into the solver and we have the previous frame that we need to use and then input 2 which is going to take our path attribute and import it here and so we want to copy this path attribute and we want it to, to copy it accumulatively based off of the previous frame. And so that's why we're using the previous frame right here. And let me back out to the setup or back out to the setup. And I'm just going to click on the cache because I've already cached it out. And if we look at the color, um, we're going to see the attribute is path. And we can see that right here we have the path that the dynamic drops follow as it slides along the surface of the glass. And that way we can remove any potential intersections of the dynamic drops with the static drops. And over here we're just going to copy that attribute back to the main grid. And here we have an attribute wrangle and what I'm saying is that the, if the path is greater than this threshold and that's going to be this value right here then delete the primitive. And so if we look at what that looks like we can see that we deleted all of the areas where the drops fall on the or where the drops slide along the glass. And so now I'm going to create a point vop and just give it some noise and if you want to look at all the particulars you can go ahead and just look at my scene um, either way I'm gonna put the display flag on you can see that I've created all these nice little bumpy areas and these are gonna be our nice little drops now what I want to do is I want to get rid of all of this back area so I'm gonna use a clip node to get rid of that and we want to also give um, we want to close the shape so we're gonna use a polyfill just to close that shape up and now we're going to create a scatter node to give it some particles just like we did with um, our dynamic drops and then we're going to use VDB to mesh the particles and then give it some smoothing and then convert it back to geometry so it's nothing too complicated as, as I said you can take a look at my setup and you'll see that it's all um, quite simple and now I'm going to merge that back with our dynamic drops and if we play along you'll see that our static or rather our dynamic drops they they slide along the surface without intersecting into any of the static drops so we don't have to worry about dealing with that issue well thank you for watching and I'll see you in part two